I was trying to take a piss earlier and there was a massive spider right where I was doing it. And now I've got fucking caterpillars crawling into my magazine pouches while I'm not looking. They're all over my gun bag already. Fucking things are everywhere. Nice worm, Stu. Nice, nice worm. I like oh. your worm. He likes you, apparently. <laughs> nice worm, Stu. <laughs> Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode here at I Am Airsoft. Today I am joined by my good buddy Stu Bucker. One on seven. He has recently received a new offering from g and G, I I believe. Indeed. And uh, it's called a Nsemlielia. S-M-L-E. Cool guys, well thanks for watching another video here at I Am Airsoft. Um, like and subscribe because this is what we're going to be doing regularly. Um, I'm fortunate enough to get to pick Stu's brain who has moved from the UK to Taiwan to work closely with um, airsoft manufacturers here. So he is one of the people in the world that get his hands on premium platforms uh, first and I'm lucky enough to be able to work with him uh, to get this information out to you. And uh, yeah, if you learn something, if you appreciate the work that Stu puts in, kindly follow us, subscribe, like, drop a comment, let us know if you want any accessories, and uh, yeah, join us on this airsoft journey. Cool. Thanks guys. This will be reviewed at some point in a future issue, next month or two. So look out for airsoft action as well. Okay. Yeah, when, when the review does come out, I will link it uh, below in the description. And uh, yeah, you guys can go and subscribe to airsoft action and see... Um, Stu's um, uh, opinion over a span of time about how the gun performs, common issues and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's it, eh, bud? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, fellow shooters. Stu Becker here. I'm with I Am Airsoft. He's behind the camera today. We're at Huto Shan, and we're doing live action out in the field stuff for the GNG number no. four SMLE Lee Enfield. So we talked about in the studio how we load it and how we fire it. I'll go through the procedure now, live, so you can actually see it. So, the SMLE comes with its own 30 round specialized speed loader. You get three of these 10 round stripper clip style magazines. Basically, you can load all three of them with the one loading thing. So you put them up into it, lock it in, and then push the shoe back, and it pushes 10 rounds of me like measured 10 rounds of ammunition each time. And then when you put it back, it refills that for the next cartridge, the next uh, magazine clip sort of thing. So. There you are, that's loaded 10 into there. So when it loads, it changes the position of this thing on the back. So there's like a track, and that helps with the auto eject when it's empty. So to load the gun, pull the charging handle back, open the action, take your clip, press it in, and it snaps in. So you can also toggle it out if you need to, if you're unloading. But when you toggle it in like that, it locks in, bolt forward, and you're ready to go. Safety's off, cocking pieces back. When it's empty, it, the clip automatically springs up to prompt that you to, need to reload. So when it is empty, you can't push the bolt forwards, so you should be aware of that. You'll get a bit of resistance. Don't try and force it. Obviously, the clip is now ejected. If you do, you'll probably damage it. So that's now empty. So you can once again use more of the rounds in your clip machine to reload it. And then last step there. So you can do three loads out of the machine. And again, ready to go again. So this basically toggles into the real magazine. You can see the actual external magazine does come out. So it's a separate entity from the gun. So toggle that in if you want to and lock that in as well. But it's supposed to be sped with a stripper clip like a real thing really. We don't take the magazine off apart from maintenance. So close the bolt again. All right, thanks guys. I just wanted to introduce the features and how it operates in theater. Today I am joined by my good buddy Stu Bucker. One on seven. He has recently received a new offering from g and G, I I believe. Indeed. And uh, it's called a Nsemlielia. S-M-L-E. S-M-L-E. <laughs> and what does that stand for, bud? Short Magazine Lee Enfield. 
Okay, and Lee Enfield is that what is that? The name of Lee the original... is the name of the designer, Enfield is the old British um, arsenal, basically the state arsenal that would produce weapons for the UK until mid 80s, 90s. Okay, and so what, uh, what's the situation with this gun? Did you buy it? Was it sent to you, or what is the... I got in contact through the guys at Airsoft Action, my manager, and basically asked if I could get hold of one of these, because I've been after a, a Lee Enfield of some sort for a while to go with my British collection. Obviously, I got the L85. This is the sort of World War II, tail end of World War II gun that the soldiers in the UK forces would have used. Awesome. I do remember in the gun wall video that we put up, you mentioned that the SML needs to go in between the FAL and the PSG1, am I correct? Yes, same kind of caliber roughly, not exactly, but 762 kind of thing, 303 British. So it's kind of up there with the, the long and high power rifles. So. Cool. Well, just to um, sort of state my ignorance here, um, I use an HK416 and so my um, general knowledge about weapons is not nearly as extensive as the Encyclopedia of War and Weapons next to me here, Mr. Stu. Prickopedia. Um, <laughs> so, um, excuse my ignorance, but I'm going to ask uh, Stu some questions from the point of view of having no knowledge about this platform whatsoever. And um, so, just first of all, what am I looking at? Is it a GBB? Is it an AEG? It's gas powered, but it's still manual operated. So basically, every time you pull the trigger with bolt closed, it will fire a little puff of gas, which will propel around, but you still have to manually cycle clip like the old guns do. So Okay. So, so is it, uh, are we using CO2 cartridges mm, or? No, it's green gas powered. So in the rear, if we have a look, there's actually a trap door, which you can open. So there's also a hop adjustment unit in there, which is magnetic, it sticks in. Put the gas in here, there's a reservoir in the back of the gun. You can fill out for about 30 seconds and okay. that will go. I haven't tried out exactly how many shots you get out of each fill, but I'll do that at some point during my review. And I imagine you get quite a lot because it's not cycling the bolts like you would in a GBB. So all it's doing is pushing the pellet out of the barrel. So okay. pretty a little more efficient. So yeah, I imagine it's a case you fill it up once in the morning and you probably use it all day. Oh, unless you're really hammering loads of rounds out. So. Okay, so I, I assume it gets quite a, a, a decent charge. Yes, yeah, okay. it's the, the, the gas canister in the back fills most of the stock, which I think is one of the reasons this is plastic and not wood. A lot of people have been like, oh, it's, it's expensive for plastic. It's like the canister in the back is so large that to make it out of wood, it'll be too fragile, I think. So they've used wood effect plastic and it's polymer. So. Right, um, so, okay, so. Tell me now, um, I assume this is a sniper rifle? It was eventually pressed into service as one, as one of the derivatives. Um, so, but this is pretty much just the basic infantry rifle uh, at the end of the Second World War. This, this kind of came in around the very end of the Second World War and afterwards and eventually got replaced by the FAL or the SLR. So. Okay, so um, just to go on just a little bit off topic, I assume that um, during the World War II era these weapons were naturally longer. Yes, to start with, I mean that's the where the short part, part comes from. Short magazine, but basically it was the slightly shorter version because to begin with these were pretty long, like pipes. longer than this. Yes, pike, pike. What, what is what is the the? Okay, you know what? We'll get there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but I mean we've noticed that the evolution of weaponry has become shorter, yeah. more compact, lighter, Definitely. and um, this was still kind of designed in an era when trench warfare was still in the back of their minds, or you had to make long range shots and accurate fire, and eventually we went towards assault rifles or the FAL okay. rifle. So. And just another like off-topic question, would a bayonet usually be on a yep. weapon like this? So there'd usually be a lug, I'm not sure if it's on here, it's basically socket bayonets would lock around the muzzle uh, okay. by this time. Uh, American weapons tend to have bayonet lugs because they go on over the muzzle. British weapons usually have a socket bayonet where it actually goes right around. So there's actually some lugs on here that would lock your bayonet in. Interesting, okay. <laughs> Look, if you guys are uh, interested in this platform and you would like a bayonet as an accessory, just drop it in the comments. And of course, Stu is in contact with GNG, uh, the manufacturer here in yeah, Taiwan. I can definitely give them that feedback if it's popular. Hundred percent. Okay, so um, so it's a gas-powered um, mm -hmm. um, airsoft gun. Yeah. And now, what what you did touch on, and something that I will be honest with from the get-go. It looks plasticky. Yes, it does do a bit. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> you you mentioned that that's for a reason. 
Yeah, to be honest, uh, they could have probably done the front in wood, or you can probably change it if you really want to. Okay. There's nothing much going on at the front apart from the barrel and the main structure. But in the rear, this whole space is taken up with gas parts. Uh, I had the, the back end off it yesterday to just check the seals, things like that, before I started using it. So most of that space is taken up by the gas canister uh, that feeds through. So it would be too thin to make it from real wood, I think. They've uh -huh. used high impact plastic because it's got to be a thin cross section. So that's the kind of compromise. If you really wanted to, you could probably change the front, and this would be less noticeable anyway, at least. But mm -hmm. that's the trade off. Look, we um, G and G is not an incompetent brand in in any shape or form, right? So the thing is, is something that Stu has mentioned recently is um, working with um, some other airsoft companies and seeing the factories and the price of materials during COVID and material shortages. The price of weapons have increased. Um, yeah. Massively. So, uh, for a weapon like this, um, GNG being intentional, I assume that it was intentionally made to meet a uh, to to meet the expectations of a certain portion yeah. of the market. Certainly, I think GNG. A lot of their stuff is mostly for export anyway, and to the broader market, the people who really want wood, you can buy this and then put a wood kit on it. I'm pretty sure. Right. I'd imagine they'd fit because I imagine they kept the proportions quite good. That's what a lot of people tend to do with sniper rifle weapons, things like that. That's what you did with the PSG, didn't you? Uh, I will do at some point. I haven't bought the wood yet, but you can. Okay. So you can buy option parts and upgrade them if you want to tart it up to look as good as possible. So well then, I guess that's a good place to segue into the price, but what is this platform going for at the moment? So it's just been released recently in country, looking at about 13,500 NT in most of the places that I've seen it advertised. So Okay. 13,500 here in Taiwan, yep. and um, naturally it's going to cost more export. Overseas, yeah. So okay. I think in the UK you're looking at about 500 pounds, people have said, and that's why they're kind of like, oh, do I want to pay that for a non-wood gun? It's just like, yeah. it's just one of those things. So, I mean, let's let's just discuss this for a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so 13,000 NT is not um, a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, say you can buy the BCM for around 15K with mm -hmm. no mags. That knocks the gun up to about 20k. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's a totally different platform. Let's compare it. Let's compare apples with apples, right? Okay. PSG. Yeah. What did you pay for yours? About 19, 20,000. Right. So 19, 20,000. And uh, what what are some additional accessories that you need then to run the gun? I right? put another 10,000 into it basically for a scope, extra mags, bipod, all that kind of thing. So okay. The the important thing with this is the accessories are quite cheap. So you get three of the cartridge loaders with it uh -huh. as part of the thing, and they come in threes, I believe, as like a bonus box. So when you open it up, when the charger is empty, it springs out, kind of like the real thing would, or cool. like, kind of like a Garand. So. You put 10 rounds into this with the special loader. You now on camera, so you fill up the speed loader, and you basically lift this up, fill this up. It's got retainers on the bottom and the top to stop the rounds flying out. Very nice. So, this is a patented specific design for this. So, you put the cartridge in there, push that forward like that, and it wow. measures out 10 rounds for each thing. So, wow. that will basically have 30 rounds in. So, the three that you get with it, you can immediately load all of them. And then you can reload that and have more charges. Oh, so, the other two? Yep. Yeah, so we've got. Can I... Yep. So there's okay. a loaded one. That one you got there is unloaded. Okay. This one's just been loaded as well. So it gives you the effect of strip clip rounds, which is kind of nice. So you basically put that in, it'll toggle down. You can push it again to take it out. Once it's empty, it will automatically jump out. And even if you push it down, it won't stay in. You have to basically manually override it. So this one is empty. Push that down put the bolt over it and you can close it, but as soon as it's empty and you retract the bolt, <coughs> it jumps out of its own accord. So then you put a new one in, so you change it for that one. This one's loaded, like that, it locks down. And again, you can toggle it out if you have to unload at some point. So that's a really nice feature. I like the realism of that. I do, I do. So. Yes, I think um, there's, a good, there's a good material feel to those mags. Yep. Um, I like the fact that, um, well, one of the issues that I've run into as a GBB user um, and this goes back to VFC and the bolt lock issues. Um, and this is also one of the reasons I never tap people on the shoulder and say, um, uh, hit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I always make sure I shoot uh, an opponent. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if we're in a close distance, we use a pistol. Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. But what I mean is with a GBB, if that bolt doesn't lock back, you don't know that you don't have any BBs unless you're counting. And so something like this that um, will clearly show that you're out of BBs, um, allows you not to. It won't close the bolt once it's up, so watch that you don't damage it. But yeah, basically gives you. I was, I was running it earlier. It gives you that tactile feel. Like, oh, oh, it's jammed. It's empty. Okay, so take the empty one out, put a fresh one in, back to work. 
Okay, and so if it does get stuck, don't force it. Yes, just yeah. be mindful. You've got 10 rounds, so when you get that resistance, don't be like, because uh, you look down and you realize, oh, it's up, it's empty, yeah. time's changed. And that's, and that's also good. It adds a bit to the realism because mm -hmm. uh, also with a GBB, you cannot double feed two BBs, mm -hmm. you will damage the hop rubber. So there's another level of consciousness, right? So this adds to the, le this, the player skill yeah. as well as the realism. Yeah. And um, I think that's snazzy. I think that's well thought through. I think that's a smart design. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, I really like the idea of it. It's, it just adds to the realism factor for a lot of people. And again, these will be a lot cheaper. So yes, you're paying a lot for the gun and the system, but all the working parts are inbuilt. So you're not having to pay for magazines that carry gas. Right. So these will be a lot cheaper because it's just plastic. So you can buy loads of these, have a proper bandolier if you're really into reenacting. Whereas, like we say, if you buy a PSG-1 or a, an AR-style platform in gas, you're going to have to pay a lot more per magazine to make it workable. And you know, just if if you will, for me to drop a trade secret that um, Stu has told me is a lot of the manufacturers make a lot of the profit on the magazines. So a gun where there are no magazines to to make that profit on, well, that is going to go into the platform yeah. itself. The sunk cost basically goes into this because they're not making as much on the accessories. You received this yesterday. Yep. So you haven't had a chance to skirmish it as yet? No, I'll be doing that this weekend. I've chronoed it, so using 0.3 grams and 12 kilogram gas, and it was running around about 125 meters per second, very okay. consistently as well. So, okay. so yeah, it's really good consistent output. And again, you're looking in the 130 meters a second range with a 0.3. So that is going to be pretty toasty. It's about two, two and a half joules maybe. Wow. I believe the bolts may actually be different for depending on which country, because if you open it up, you can actually remove it in a realistic manner. So let's take the charge around first. But I trained on something similar when I was in the Air Cadets. You basically push this down, lift the locking lug up, and the entire bolt comes out. It's just oh, like wow. a real thing. So 2.4 on the bottom there, I'm guessing, is the dual rating maximum for this. So okay. in Taiwan, obviously, our power levels are allowed to be a bit higher. Uh, other things, they might, they might come up with a different bolt that's got a different nozzle on it that's tighter. So like an MPAS system or the RE Tech kind of additional things. I imagine they'll come up with different bolts for different countries and it makes it really easy to change the power level then. So. I see. And um, so now, is there uh, an easy spring change system built in here or do you mean you change the actual bolt? Well, I imagine you change the bolt and the nozzle because there is no spring in this apart from the mechanism that's working because it's obviously gas powered. Okay, so, so sorry, just to clear up, like I said, um, uh, um, so, so the the bolt mm -hmm. has a valve yeah the valve controls the impasse yes. a larger um, valve will have a larger gas release yeah. which will increase the power that goes yes. through the gun increasing so. the dual counts and so on yep okay so so, so i imagine that'll be the thing that changed because it's marked on the bottom so i'm guessing that's because they've got different power levels for different bolts for I different understand. regions so okay um so then um one more question before we go through some specs mm -hmm. what do you think boy when you're holding this thing yep. and you're feeling it does it feel because um as you mentioned this is something similar to what you trained with in the yes headache. how's the comparison between real steel to this it's very familiar i mean the, the action of the bolt is taking me back at the end of the day. So like the, the takedown procedure is basically real steel. So say you, there's a catch back here, you push that in, lift your locking lug up, make sure your sight's up, and you just take the bolt out. So it's very, very familiar for me. We use the number eight trainer in the cadets, which is basically the same system but single loading. So it's got the removable magazine. I mean, in practice, soldiers wouldn't really remove them. This has been put in there, and basically you, you charge it from the top. You don't really remove the magazine that often. A lot of them actually had them chained to it, so you couldn't lose it. It was just for maintenance purposes. So yeah, it's very easy to run it as well. Because there's no spring, there's no air power, it's all gas, so it makes it very easy to run it fast, and it's nice and smooth. And the trigger pull is pretty decent and crisp on it. You see it here, there, just very light puff of gas, because it's not operating anything apart from blowing the pellet out. So. What is that? How much does it weigh? 3,640 grams, so three and a half kilos. Okay, so, and so yeah, good tactile feel. Yep. Can, I, can I give it Certainly, a, yeah. can I give it a squeeze, okay. man? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, that feels good. Yep. Yeah. That feels very good. So you've got the grip at the back there, you can. Yeah, man, I like that. shoulder up. It feels good, it feels elegant, I yes. must say, and it feels, it feels, okay, I have to close one eye just to line up. Indeed. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, it feels really good. It's got a good weight to it. I don't feel like hold, I'm holding a toy whatsoever. No. Okay, and so I assume when I charge, I'm going to put my thumb on the bolt mm -hmm. and Lift pick it. up with the first finger and charge yep. and put back and then down. 
Okay, and... and squeeze the back. Okay, okay just forward. There you go. Just forward? Yeah. Okay, okay. This so is the cocking piece, so if you push against that, it'll probably interfere with it. So okay, so up, so pull back, yeah. forward, there and down. down. Yep. Okay, clean. Um, can I pull the trigger? Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing in it, so yeah. Nice. So you see the cocking piece. You can actually recock it like the real thing without cocking the action. Okay. In the real gun, you'd do that if there was a squib round or kind of thing you need to refire. Obviously, it doesn't really damage the airsoft one. If you already fired the round off, it would have been empty chamber. But it gives you that realism option with the cocking piece. So there's also the long range sight on top, which actually has the adjustment. So there's a leaf sight which comes up, and you can adjust the range of that looking through the aperture at the top, or you flip it down, and it's more like a combat aperture for short range, which I imagine for airsoft purposes is going to be more useful. I like it very much. Mm. Um, I must be honest, um, it's, it, it's uh, the weight, the rate ratio of the gun is quite far forward, mm -hmm. so I feel it on my forearm. Yes. Um, but um, my, you know, my 416 is about 5 kkg, yeah. so I'm used to quite a weighty platform but I mean you know I suppose you drop it you pick it up you get it on site mm -hmm. and it will be a pleasure to to use yep. um, I assume that um, you know we always talk about which kind of an individual would would purchase this and yep. I think someone who has a good knowledge of World War Two. who do you think this is for? Yeah, I mean, certainly Barra and our team, he's already uh, expressed in a deep interest in having a go at it at least and maybe getting on himself. Someone that's passionate about history is probably going to like this. It's not the most practical skirmishing weapon. You've got 10 rounds in each stripper clip. You could uh, theoretically scope it up and use it as a uh, SATS kind of sniper. But yeah, it's going to be for someone who enjoys the look of it and maybe taking longer single shots, yeah. sniper style perhaps. But it's not going to go up against you guys with like 30 round mag GBBs that easily. So it's, it's going to be for collectors, reenactors, people who really care about the history. It's a nice yeah. piece for that. So. Yeah, like like um, someone who wants to uh, get involved, get in, get in, um, put the correct uniform on, yes. you know, dress up correctly, the World War II style, and um, yep. you know, reenact like you and said. It, yeah, definitely looks the part for that. Even though it is plastic, the wood effect's pretty good. I mean, I've seen other manufacturers do far worse than this at the end of the day. So, yep. You know, to, to be honest with you, sitting here and, and, and holding it and looking at it, it's kind of lost its um, plastic -y look. Mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at it, 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 it is, it is, it's well finished, it feels good. Uh, just picking up the, the weight of it, it's yep. very weighty, and so like I said, it immediately, oh, that feels substantial. Yes. That feels like a, a, a platform. I'd, I'd, I'd actually love to, to have a go with that. Yep. Um, so yeah, just before we, we wrap up, but you want to throw a couple stats our way? So, and, so uh, overall length, 1,113 millimeters, so just over a meter. Mm -hmm. The barrel of that is 625 millimeters, so it's pretty decent length. I mean, your SVD is getting up to about 700, that's probably one of the longest barrels in airsoft that I can what think of. What is an of. SVD? That's the Russian DMR sniper rifle okay. that I used to have in the UK, okay. uh, and that LCT are also bringing out as well. So yeah, 700 mil is pretty much the longest barrel I can think of, and this is not far off that. So certainly a good idea for a long range weapon. Wow. Yeah, your capacity is not there in terms of you only got 10 rounds per stripper, but that's pretty much the real thing anyway, so it's realistic to that extent. Yeah. So if you're passionate about history and you really want to finish off a British loadout and you want a gas gun rather than having to fight a spring, so when you're prone, you can still cycle out really easily rather than fighting against a powerful spring to give you that spring power. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a good piece for that. I'm probably going to really enjoy putting it out this weekend and I'm guessing some of the other guys are going to want to have a look at it as well and give it a try. So Yeah, um, you know, I like it. Yeah. I like it. And uh, the fact that you don't have to buy mags, I think that's built into the price. Mm -hmm. I think the right kind of person will be very passionate about uh, this kind of platform. Well done, GNG. Yeah. So just one last thing as well. The hop unit is underneath. You can actually use the tool that's provided in the back, it's magnetic so it won't fall out. You basically put that in there and you can tweak the hop right from beneath it. So, and that sits in with the gas thing at the back there. Awesome. Cool guys, well thanks for watching another video here at I Am Airsoft. Um, like and subscribe because this is what we're going to be doing regularly. Um, I'm fortunate enough to get to pick Stu's brain who has moved from the UK to Taiwan to be closer to work closely with um, airsoft manufacturers here. So he is one of the people in the world that get his hands on premium platforms uh, first and I'm lucky enough to be able to work with him uh, to get this information out to you. And uh, yeah, if you learn something, if you appreciate the work that Stu puts in, Kindly follow us, subscribe, like, drop a comment, let us know if you want any accessories, and uh, yeah, join us on this airsoft journey. Yep. Thank, Thank you very much, no I appreciate problem. it. Thanks, and guys. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>